Hey guys welcome back. This is a story about what if Naruto befriended Kurama early. After a life changing event, Naruto meets Kurama early and they become partner 7 good friends. With a better outlook on life, he meets many who want to join him and help achieve their dreams and goals together. Among those friends are many beautiful women who have realized just how important he is to them. Before we start thank you for all of the support it really means a lot to me. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and my second channel Shadow Mania and leave a like. And check the description for the creator of this great fanfic and support them for making this fanfic and subscribe to my other channel Shadow Mania for What If Deku. So let's start. Chapter 9. Realizations back to the night after the kidnapping attempt Hyuga compound, thank you. Hanada whispered with a serene expression as she slowly combed fingers through Hanabi's long and silky black hair with her left hand. The younger Hyuga curled up further into a ball as she snored gently, resting her head on her older sister's lap like it was a pillow. The two girls were on the living room couch and Naruto was sitting in one of the chairs across from them. You've already thanked me hundreds of times this night, Hinata-chan. The boy teased with an amused smile, not at all irritated with the girl's constant gratitude. Yes, but she's my precious little sister and she's one of the few reminders I have left of our mother. I'd be crushed if we did lose her, she trailed off as she raked her hand gently through Hanabi's hair again. The little Hayuga looked like she would begin purring any moment. Naruto felt a pang in his chest as he remembered Hanada tearfully reminiscing about her deceased mother when she decided to open up about that not too long ago. He knew she would not have been able to recover from this if he had failed. Naruto-kun, father told me some details about your, Hanada trailed off, as she seemed to think about what would be an appropriate word. Naruto knew immediately she was talking about Kurama. My tenant, you mean. She flinched and slowly nodded as she was uncomfortable about bringing this up. I don't mind answering any question you may have about my situation. Naruto headed off her growing nervousness over this subject. She seemed to visibly relax at her friend's words. Was the Kayubi the one who taught you all you've learned lately? She quickly got out, and the blonde raised an impressed eyebrow. That's correct, but I'm surprised you figured that out. Well, no matter how hard I tried. I could never seem to find information on this. Sensei, you keep mentioning, and you were secretive whenever I asked you directly. It wasn't hard to figure out after you had to reveal everything tonight. Not everything yet. Sorry, but my parentage will have to wait for another day. That's pretty perceptive of you. Anything else? Anyo, I would like to say something before we continue. Are you able to talk with the Kayubi? Hanada inquired nervously. Naruto nodded. I would like for you to relay to her that I want to sincerely express my gratitude for training you up until now. Otherwise, who knows if my little sister could have been saved. She spoke firmly as she gazed directly into his eyes, her lavender-tinted eyes never wavering. I appreciate the gratitude, little girl. Kurama mumbled lazily as she was napping on a soft patch of grass in Naruto's mindscape. She says you're welcome. Naruto relayed the message. Hanada smiled happily and nodded. Does anyone else know about her? Pretty much anyone that's not around our age. Only Hokage Gigi and a few high-ranking shinobi know the more intimate details, especially the fact that I'm getting lessons from the fox. The rest just know she was sealed into me. Why were we not allowed to know? Like Hokage Gigi told you earlier, he made a law forbidding the villagers from talking about it so they wouldn't pass the information down to my generation with hopes that I might have a somewhat normal childhood growing up. Aside from my few friends, it's not working out well since everyone can just warn their children to avoid me without explaining the reasons why. Hanada frowned. I don't like that. Everyone should be able to see you for who you truly are, a kind and courageous person. Even the Kayubi doesn't sound as evil as the stories made her out to be. Did they even know the fox was actually female? I'm not trying to rationalize this, but they lost a lot of people that night, including the fourth Hokage. It was easier for them to think I'm the fox reincarnated and take it out on me when they had nothing else to vent at. It's slowly going away each day, though. Lately a good portion of the shinobi force don't seem to mind me, and it's just the civilians who won't move past this. Still, I refuse to accept them trying to hurt you, Naruto-kun. Hanada glowered at her memories of the villagers cursing and glaring at him whenever they went out on walks. Hanada-chan, I want you to promise me something. Naruto said almost sternly to his friend, who narrowed her eyes defiantly. 
She could guess what this was. You need to let this go. Act the same as you always did while with me out in the village and leave them alone, okay? But, you let your anger overtake you and tried to attack Tamari-san when she reacted badly. If you hadn't been stopped by Hiyashi-sama, you might have been hurt if the Suna escorts retaliated against you for harming the Kazekaja's daughter. Then I'd have gotten angry and attacked them in return. Who knows what that might have led to. Naruto said bluntly with a hard look, making Hinata shrink under his gaze as she truly realized what she nearly did. I I I, tried to hit a cage's daughter. That's why I want you to leave this alone. There are consequences in reacting like that, and it'll hurt me if you got into trouble on my behalf. Just be satisfied with the fact that I'm happy with the friends I already have and I don't need the entire village's approval. There is no need to force others into accepting that I'm not really the Kyubi. They'll learn that on their own with time. Okay, I promise. I'm sorry. Hanada mumbled, clearly shaken by the fact she could have caused an international incident just because of her rage. It's no big deal. Actually, it made me a little happy you would be protective like that. Just be careful next time. Naruto said with a smile. Hanada, still feeling a little ashamed, could only nod silently with a downcast expression. After a long moment of silence, she moved her gaze down to her sleeping sister, looking a little shy about what she was going to say. Naruto-kun would it be okay I if you sit by me, and I'll let me r rest my head on why you, she mumbled, hating her stuttering at a time like this. Naruto raised his eyebrows at her request. I don't mind, but why? You'd just fall asleep and I'm sure your dad is probably expecting me to head home soon. Naruto cocked his head slightly in confusion with that fox-like expression she always loved, making her almost lose her train of thought but she preserved. Father would be fine with you staying the night, and it's already early morning. I almost lost my little sister and right now I don't feel like it's safe yet. But, having you near me makes me feel safe and calm. Is it okay? Naruto took a moment to think and then shrugged as he stood up from the chair. Sure if that's what you'd like, Hinata-chan. I'm pretty sure your dad or Hokage Gigi are safer to be around, though, since they're stronger. He spoke as he moved to the couch, flopped down next to Hinata's right, and put his left arm up around her shoulders to make it more comfortable for her. It only took Hinata a few seconds of hesitation before she carefully rested her head on his chest and snuggled up with a big grin. No, Naruto-kun, you're a million times better than father or Hokage-sama. I can't imagine feeling this safe and warm with anyone else. Hanada enjoyed Naruto's slow heartbeat and the rising of his chest with each breath while she continued to absentmindedly comb through Hanabi's hair. It was not long before she noticed Naruto's heartbeat and breathing were slowing down and becoming even. He's falling asleep. Hanada carefully removed her head a little so she could look up to see Naruto resting his head against the couch's back cushion, and his eyes were closed. Hanada smiled a little mischievously and slowly leaned in to leave a very slight peck on his left cheek. She blushed a little and giggled quietly when Naruto mumbled a little and his cheeks became a little pink. The Hyuga heiress slowly returned her head to his chest and closed her eyes shortly after. A while later, Hyuga Hiyashi quietly stepped into the living room, finally done with the mess caused by his youngest daughter's attempted kidnapping. He noticed the slumbering trio on the sofa and allowed a genuine smile at their gentle expressions. He picked up two blankets nearby and carefully draped one over Hanabi and the other over the sleeping couple. Hanada has finally convinced you to stay the night, it seems. I never set up any rule about that and yet you were too polite to notice I did not care. I am a little envious of you though, Naruto-san. Hanada never displayed that kind of expression sleeping near me. He or she thought as he glanced at his daughter's sleeping face, one that showed extreme contentment in knowing no harm would ever come to her and her sister as long as Naruto was nearby. He smiled again and quietly stepped away to retire to his bedroom. The next morning in Hokage's office, this scroll contains all the information Inoichi-san gathered from the Kumo missing nin's brain. He was able to collect some valuable information about some of the techniques this nin used, but we couldn't find anything important about Kumogakur that our SPI's reports did not cover, however. Anbu Captain Hata K. Kakashi drawled as he laid a scroll on the desk across from the third Hokage, who nodded in understanding. The aged leader was happy that Yamanaka Inoichi had the ability to scan through a deceased person's brain as long the neural pathways weren't damaged or did not deteriorate too much yet. And does he know anything about the breach in our barrier? 
Unfortunately, he really was just a client in this one. He only requested and paid the Kiri missing nin to get him a pure Hyuga. Only they knew the way in. The Hokage sighed in frustration at that. And we cannot recover anything from the other men's brains. No, sir. Naruto really did a number on the ones he killed and their brains were too damaged. He did try to leave the third, the leader, alive for us to interrogate but the kanai from the Kumo Nin penetrated too far into his brain. I suspect rumors that other villages trained their shinobi to aim for the heads of captives or informants with risky information the Yamanakas could exploit are becoming more legitimate each day. Hiruzen frowned at that. There have been a small decline in information they were able to gather from dead bodies because of an increase in head traumas. He hoped there wasn't a deliberate cause, but this latest incident was too hard to ignore. Keep up the investigation on this traitor. We need to figure out how they came in and left, and we should be able to follow the trail after that. And what do we do about the remains? Go ahead and collect the bounties then give the money to me. Too bad we won't see the Reikage's reaction. You may go, Captain. Kakashi could be seen visibly grinning behind his face mask. It was a good thing for any village that a missing nin was returned quickly. But not too quickly. It was a blow to any village's pride if one of its top missing nin came back in a scroll a few weeks after being listed in the bingo book. That might imply to the other villages that this supposedly powerful nin was actually weak in the village trained weak shinobi. Kakashi bowed his head and vanished in a poof of smoke with a shunshin. A moment later, Naruto knocked on and entered through the office door. Good morning, Hokage Gigi, he called out as he stepped up to the desk. The third smiled at his surrogate grandson's arrival. Good morning, Naruto-kun. Good timing since I was about to send for you. Oh, want me to go over exactly what happened yesterday? I figured you'd call me for that. The third nodded and prepared a scroll and pen before gesturing for the boy to begin. The blonde then recounted everything that happened. 30 minutes later, and that's when you came in and kicked ass, the boy finished with a flourish. The Hokage chuckled as he put down the pen. You did great. There were moments where you faced death and a normal child your age would have frozen up and been unable to do anything, yet you kept finding ways out of the situations you were in. I am sorry we had to let you put yourself in danger like that. If only we were more prepared, he trailed off with his gaze slightly downcast. Don't worry. If I didn't think I could, I wouldn't have done it. Hiruzen smiled and nodded at this confident reassurance, before remembering something. How did Lady Hanada take the revelation about you? She's perfectly fine with it. She didn't care because she knows I really am Uzumaki Naruto, not the fox. Good. This time your transformation didn't frighten the villagers because the detection barrier also protects against intrusion of foreign chakra in case someone attempted a mass genjutsu on the whole village. It was a bonus it blocked out the Kyuubi's chakra as well. I'm just sorry I could not prevent the Suna people from seeing that power since we were in a hurry. Even though they are our ally, revealing yourself like that could cause some issues later down the road. Hiruzen then raised his eyebrow at the blonde's growing foxy smirk. I doubt you'd need to be worried about that. We have something against them as well. With some information from Tamari-san, the fox was able to connect the dots about who's possibly the son is Jinchuriki. I would call that an even trade-off. May I hear your guess on who this person may be? Naruto looked slightly torn as he seemed to think for a moment. Before that, Tamari-san told me this in confidence, and I feel like I'm betraying her trust by revealing this. I just hope someone here won't use the information for bad things. The third's eyes flashed in anger at someone who would do this, his old teammate and warmonger, Danzo. He would be damned if he let this information find its way to that man. Actually, you know what, Naruto-kun. Keep that to yourself. I do not feel confident about keeping that information hidden from people who would use it for their own gains. Just promise me that if you meet this person or know he's nearby, especially in this village, you will inform me or someone you trust right away. We will take some measures at that time then. Naruto looked visibly relieved, happy he wouldn't have to choose between loyalty to his village and loyalty to a person who told him her secrets, even if it was inadvertent. The Hokage smiled as he leaned back in his chair. What do you intend to do with your training for this year until the next break? Naruto furrowed his brow in thought for a moment. The fox will be teaching me elemental jutsu. She said she'll start me off on nature manipulation training soon. 
Do you know what nature your chakra would be aside from the fire affinity you said you're gaining from the Kyubi's chakra? Naruto shook his head. Knowing how to find out, the Hokage reached into a drawer in his desk and took out a piece of paper. This is a chakra paper. If you channel your chakra into it, it will tell you what your primary affinity is and possibly one or more secondaries. He explained as he reached across the desk to hand the paper to the boy, who took it and immediately began channeling chakra. The paper sliced itself in half with a sharp sound and then the two pieces burst into somewhat intense flames. It surprised Naruto into dropping the pieces and they burned to ashes long before they even reached the floor. The Hokage smiled pleasantly at this. It looks like fire and wind are both your primary affinities. Neither seems to be dominant over the other within you so you will have high mastery of both fire and wind natures. This is a nice discovery since these elements are opposite of the other and it's very rare for anyone to have these two elements together. He explained with some pride as he watched Naruto beam at this. We have plenty of expertise with fire jutsu since that's the primary element of this village but unfortunately we don't have much information on wind jutsu. There are only two people in this village with wind affinity. One of them is my son, Asuma, and he should be able to help you with this when he eventually returns from his tour of duty with the 12 guardians. Who's the other? Naruto innocently asked before he was surprised by a dark frown on his surrogate grandfather's face. Naruto-kun, if someone comes to you out of nowhere and offers to teach you wind jutsu among other techniques, stall for time and come to me. I do not want you to associate with the second person. His name is Danzo and that is all you need to know to stay away from him. The blonde couldn't help but nod nervously under the Hokage's hardened gaze. He rarely saw him serious like this. This, Danzo, had to be bad news then. No doubt the type of person that would assassinate another village's Jinchuriki for his own gains. That's probably why this old fart had you keep the identity of Shukaku's host to yourself. Your father was very wary of Danzo and spoke ill of him when he confided in your mother, like how that warmonger kept calling for the Hachibi's host to be secretly eliminated ever since that power was seen during the Third War. He's apparently someone that would do things behind the scenes to weaken other villages for the, the betterment of Konoha. Thanks for the information, Kurama. I'll keep that in mind, Hokage Gigi. The old man nodded, glad he got his point across. I have kept you here too long. I will let you get back to your business, and have a good day, Naruto-kun. Naruto smiled and waved as he left the office. As he walked down the stairs, he was deep in thought. I don't suppose you know wind jutsu. Your father was wind natured too. I have seen him use quite a few in his spars with your mother. I may be able to help you recreate them from the hand seals I have seen, but beyond that, you will have to find other ways of obtaining more. Despite the lack of information, this is a very good coincidence. What do you mean? Wind nature is perfect for anyone who uses bladed weapons. If you were able to find or create sabers that channel chakra, you will be able to make the sabers sharper and more durable. You may also be able to extend the blades with chakra or even generate sharp blades of wind to cut people down from a distance. That's pretty awesome. But, I find it strange. What's that? The more abilities I find out about myself in combination with the power you're giving me, the more it feels like I'm turning into a deadly force of nature. If that's the case, then it's a perfect match for the meaning of your name. You did want to be the strongest shinobi around, so I say take the bad with the good. You aren't going to win by talking to your opponents. PFFT, like I would be stupid enough to try that. Two weeks later in a small village outside of Konoha, you want to what? A disguised Iwa shinobi asked incredulously as he stared daggers at another disguised person sitting across from him. They were sitting in a corner in a small and rowdy bar within this small village in the middle of nowhere. Don't make me repeat myself. I said I'm closing everything down. People in Konoha are getting too close to my trail. I can't risk allowing any more passage into the village while this is going on. They're not stupid and I'll be caught if I keep this up. The disguised Konoha shinobi fidgeted nervously as he glanced around the bar room for any possible tale. You fucking coward. This is the only easy way we can get into the damn tree-hugging village and you're denying me that. Just because they're flailing around in the dark for someone to pin this on, the Iwa nin hissed harshly. I don't care. I can feel they're too close. Someone must have clued them in onto me and now they're starting to focus their attention on the Chunin patrols, which is where I am now. 
I'm sorry but tell everyone else I'm not going to do any more favors for anyone. Goodbye. The Konoha Nin quickly stood up to leave. The Iwa stared after him with burning rage. Fucking cocksucker. Now I have to go back to Iowa and tell them I failed to get in. At least I won't have to waste my time with this mission. I doubt I would have found anything about a possible offspring of that blonde monster, anyway. Outside, the disguised Nin slowly made his way back to Konoha, deep in thought. I'll have to seal up the secret tunnel and make sure it looks like it hasn't been used in forever if someone did come across it. For now, I'll lay low and take up a second job then leave the patrols a few months later saying I've found my dream job. Some time later in Naruto's mindscape Kurama looked over a huge crowd of Naruto clones while they seemed to be concentrating on one leaf each in their hands. She slowly walked along, her footsteps thundering among the clones who were unfazed by a huge crimson fox towering over them. Her red eyes eventually focused on a lone Naruto beyond the large crowd as he was going through some kata he learned with a saber in each hand. She admired the beautiful display of the sabers flashing and cutting through the air as he passionately went through the moves he learned. She walked up to the lone Naruto, her eyes still trained on him as she slowly circled him once, checking him out from every angle before stopping to sit on her haunches when she was once again directly in front of him. A few more minutes of practicing passed before Naruto finally stopped and let out a tired sigh. He threw the sabers up into the air and they disappeared in wisps of smoke, they were obviously apparitions. He looked up at the fox with an expectant grin. I don't see any issue with your kata. Good job, Naruto. How is the nature manipulation going? The fire group's coming along further than the wind group. I think I might be able to burn the leaf now. Dispel the group slowly then try it for me. If you succeed, we'll move the fire group onto the next level. The boy complied quickly, dispelling the Kaden training clones in groups of tens. A few minutes later, he grabbed a leaf and held it up as he concentrated on it. The leaf burned completely in almost an instant. He let out an excited laugh while Kurama looked on with a satisfied grin. Very good. For the next level, you will have your clones burn this. She spoke as she got up to walk over to a gigantic tree, one that positively dwarfed Naruto, at the nearby tree line into the large forest beyond. She raised one tail high above the rest then twitched her body to get it in motion. The tail whipped out in a near invisible blur at the trunk and Naruto was shocked to hear a sharp cutting sound. For a moment, nothing happened then the trunk suddenly crackled as the tree began to tilt, straining under the shift in weight. The tree fell in what seemed like slow motion and landed with a thunderous crash. It surprised the clones into stopping their training to watch in awe for a moment. Large tree. You will pass when your clones are able to burn a tree of this size completely in under a minute. Wow, sounds real easy. Naruto grumbled as he swatted away at the dust that the fallen tree kicked up then created a large group of clones to work on the tree. Naruto, it's important you have total mastery manipulating fire and wind, especially since they're the primary affinities. You need to be able to switch between the two on the fly. The more you push yourself on this training, the easier it will be for you to switch between them. Naruto nodded tiredly before looking over at the wind group. Looks like they're about there too. It won't be too long before I can cut a leaf. Speaking of the clones, this gives me an idea for when you learn the jutsu. You have a built-in method for easily using combination jutsu. Really? That'd be awesome. What will I have to do? Sometimes you can be a little dense. The idea is right there in front of you. The fox retorted with a sweat drop. What do you, oh, I get it now. I can do wind while a clone does fire, and vice versa. Naruto murmured as he smacked his forehead. Or have two clones do the collaboration for you while you do something else. Many great tactics can be devised from this the more you learn different jutsu. Great. What do I have to do for the next level of wind manipulation training? You'll have to create a large waterfall in this mindscape, and have your clones try to split it in two. Are you fucking with me? That's impossible. Not according to your father. He did it when he trained his wind chakra. Dispel your wind group and see if you can cut a leaf instantly. In the meantime, we'll create a giant waterfall for you to practice on. Let's get to it. Kurama ordered, with visible glee in her eyes at tormenting her container some more. Naruto groaned in defeat and muttered something about, slave driver fox. Some time later during the second school year 11 year old Naruto grunted as he landed on the dusty ground on his backside, nursing his just punched cheek. 
He winced as he tried to block out the screeching of the girls surrounding them. Sasuke-kun. You're so great. Yeah. Put that jerk in his place. You're the only one in the class who can beat him, Sasuke-kun. The girls among the crowd surrounding Naruto and Sasuke cheered as the raven-haired boy stood victorious over the blonde, an infuriating cocky smirk plastered on his face. Naruto found that irritating and wished he could actually go all out against him. That'd teach the Uchiha and these idiots fawning over him. It made him feel a bit better when he saw Ino wasn't one of these girls cheering his defeat, but only just. Patience, Naruto. You know why we're holding back here. The teachers and the imbeciles on that civilian council will scream bloody murder if you harm a single hair on this boy. You do remember what happened last time you hit him, I trust. Naruto growled silently as he remembered losing like usual the time but still landed a solid hit on Sasuke just because he felt like it. He was hauled off to stand before the civilian council and was growing angrier every time one of the morons opened their mouth to call for his removal from the academy because he was growing as strong as their precious Sasuke. He was grateful when the Hokage crashed the meeting and made the entire civilian council empty their bowels and bladders before fainting under his massive killing intent. Apparently, a mere advisory council called this meeting without his permission so he had them all hauled off for a week alone with Morino Ibiki to ask if they were harboring any traitorous tendencies by blatantly undermining the Hokage's authority. Naruto sighed as he got up to dust himself off and listened to the instructor enthusiastically call Sasuke the winner like usual and many girls flocked around him while he walked off arrogantly. Again, he was pleased to see Ino wasn't part of the crowd. Instead, she frowned and stared at Naruto with an unreadable expression for a moment, before walking off in another direction. Was she upset he lost? Thought she'd be happy her, Sasuke-kun, Wan. She's this way only whenever I'm the one who lost against him. Who knows? I do not claim to understand a human female's thought processes. I guess she's not totally a fangirl like the others she actually does a bit of training with us once in a while. Not as much as I'd prefer, though. In fact, she and the others always seem scared whenever I suggested going full out together. I think that's my fault. What we consider normal for your training would be considered, inhuman, by others. In fact, that freaky human with the thick eyebrows is likely the only one that can match our type of training. Naruto let out a brief shudder as his traumatized mind once again repressed all memory of the unintentional brainwashing one made a guy attempted on him about, youthfulness. With the end of the match, the class was over and the crowd dissipated for the day. The blonde turned to walk away only to find himself face to face with one Hyuga Hanada's glare. Ino wasn't the only one upset about his, defeat. He almost groaned since he knew this was going to happen eventually. Each time he, lost, to Sasuke, he could tell Hanada was growing more unhappy and frustrated, as she had to listen to nearly the entire class fawn over Sasuke and not giving her friend any praise that she thought he deserved. He couldn't blame her since she had seen what he was truly capable of. Hanada-chan, don't say anything. Just be happy knowing I can kick this guy's ass a thousand different ways if I wanted to. I just don't need the attention. He whispered as he glanced worriedly at Sasuke's group, making sure they were not overheard. I'm tired of seeing you acting like this. I know you have to hold back but I cannot stand seeing that pompous Uchiha standing over you as if it was his divine right. At least just make him work for it. You did say Hokage-sama punished those in the council so they would not do anything now. Hanada hissed back a little too loudly, her lavender eyes showing irritation. Geez, and you were supposed to be somewhat of a pacifist compared to me. Naruto teased with a smirk. His friend didn't appreciate the teasing and puffed her cheeks angrily. What did you say, Hayuga? The couple jumped at the new voice's intrusion and looked over to see Sasuke standing some distance away, his face in a mild frown. The raven-haired boy became more irritated when the confused duo didn't respond right away. The girls around him grumbled at Hinata for being called out by, their Sasuke-kun. I asked you a question. Answer it. Surprisingly, before Naruto could retort, Hinata showed a defiant expression. Our private conversation is none of your business, Uchiha. Please leave us in peace and go back to showing off for your so-called, friends. Hinata ground out with the perfect Hyuga composure. Naruto could tell she really disliked Sasuke because she only acted like that toward those she considered detestable. The fangirls gasped and were now glaring daggers at her for telling off their dreamboat. 
I don't care. I expect an answer from you. You said this Dobi here was holding back against me. What did you mean by that? Oi, bastard. She said to leave us alone. You should learn to listen to a lady's request. Naruto cut in with a scowl as he stepped in front of Sasuke. Hanada had to blush a little at him defending her honor. Baka. Don't get in Sasuke-kun's way. Sakura screeched from next to Sasuke. Naruto winced and stuck a pinky finger into one of his ears. You know, just because we're outside does not mean you get to use your outside voice. Kami, even the deaf would complain about your voice. Sakura sputtered at the insult, too stunned to reply. Enough of this. Hayuga, you will explain now. Sasuke growled as he reached out for Hinata's arm. Before she could prepare to defend herself, she was surprised to see his hand stopped by Naruto quickly grabbing the wrist. The Uchiha was just as surprised, too. Oi, didn't I tell you to listen to a lady's request? I'll teach you a quick lesson. The blonde spoke coldly with his icy blue eyes boring into the Uchiha's wide black eyes. It was a total departure from the usual cheerful and mischievous expression he had on all the time. Before Sasuke could register anything, he found himself tumbling along the ground for about 20 feet when Naruto flung him aside like discarded litter. Rolling to a stop, he gasped more in shock than pain, not believing what just happened. All the girls were stunned into silence while Hinata was sporting a slight grin as she had to do everything possible to keep a truly vindictive smile from spreading. Let's go, Hinata chan before we draw any more attention. Naruto quickly said as he stormed past everyone while gently dragging his friend along, who was simply too happy to be holding his hand. Wait, Dobi, fight me. Sasuke snarled as he slowly rose from the ground. Naruto stopped for a moment to glance dully at him. I'd love to put you in your place. Only Kami knows how much you really deserve that. I can't do it, though. Why not? Afraid you'll lose to me even at your full power. Sasuke retorted with a vicious smirk, thinking he scared the Dobi. No, the civilian counsel you got in your back pocket tried to punish me for leaving a cute little bruise in your cheek a few weeks ago. Now, I have to hold back even more against you because they'll froth at the mouth about the very real possibility of their precious elite Uchiha losing to a no-name orphan like me. Now excuse me since we have to go. Yane. Naruto cheerfully said as he walked off with a blushing Hinata in tow, who was still in a daze about having her hand still being held by the one she liked, even if it was unintentional. Sasuke was too stunned at what was said that he just tuned out the girls murmuring around him. They were in denial saying that blonde goof was lying to look cool, yet he had a feeling he was telling the truth. He clenched his fist while gritting his teeth at the humiliation of being dismissed so casually. A few weeks later at the Hyuga compound he or she had mixed feelings. The clan head was pleased, yet he was also irritated. The cause of this was happening in front of him as he sat outside on his rear porch overlooking his family's private training yard watching his two daughters battle together against Naruto at the same time. Sipping from a cup of hot tea in his hands, he was glad that this boy's participation in the spars seemed to have made his daughters strive to improve themselves in long strides. On the other hand, he was irritated that, despite their improvements, they haven't been able to land a single hit on him. The children were at this for 15 minutes and Naruto only dodged while keeping his arms firmly crossed against his chest throughout the spar. Hanabi was clearly frustrated and even Hinata was showing signs of losing her patience as they attacked him in a flurry of punches and kicks in which he effortlessly dodged. Naruto dodged a high kick by crouching under Hinata's leg and the smaller Hanabi tried to capitalize by aiming a palm strike level with the blonde's face. He smirked before swaying his head to the left to allow the palm to barely graze across the top of his collarbone. He made an attack of his own for the first time in this spar as he shot both arms outward toward the girls. His left palm slammed against Hanada's hip while her leg was still up in air and the right palm struck Hanabi's exposed side after she missed her attack. Both girls, already off balance from their attempted attacks, were easily knocked off their feet, and they landed roughly away from him. He smiled before doing an impressive series of backward somersaults toward the rear porch before jumping and flipping over to land gently on the wooden surface next to Hiyashi, who hadn't shown any reaction to his showboating. He then bent down to pick up his own cup of tea to sip it as he watched the girl slowly get up from his attack. I am not sure what to make of your actions just now, Naruto-san. He or she spoke with a slight tinge of irritation at Naruto's perceived cockiness while he took a sip of his tea. 
I've learned it's better to be a bit of a hard ass while training with people, Hiyashi Sama. It'll force people to truly understand their own weaknesses and work hard to improve them. You don't see these two giving up any time soon, right? Naruto cheekily said as he indicated the two girls that recovered from Naruto's attack with dogged determination clear on their faces. Hiyashi had to admit this boy had a natural ability to encourage and motivate anyone around him. Okay. I'm going on the attack. Be ready. Naruto announced before he hopped off the porch and sprinted forward. He and the two girls immediately engaged in a flurry of punches and kicks. After a few minutes of dodging each other, Naruto began to force the girls back with well-timed counters that barely missed the girls only thanks to their eyes. The blonde then broke off the melee by suddenly hopping back away from the girls, surprising them into freezing in indecision for a second. Upon landing, he dashed forward at Hinata, a hand raised for a strike. She gasped at the blonde's increased speed and instinctively struck out with a palm strike at his chest for a counter. Hanabi tried to intercept Naruto with a sliding leg sweep in his path but he surprised them both by jumping high into the air over their heads, easily avoiding their strikes. Landing behind Hinata, he swung around to throw a hard punch at her back. He was expecting her to dodge the attack easily since she could see him behind her with her eyes. He would then follow up with a surprise leg sweep. However he was surprised when Hinata did dodge, but it was an instant too late. His knuckles grazed hard against her ribs when she could not completely get out of the way in time. He felt a little bad when he heard her cry out sharply in pain as she slumped to the ground, clutching at her side, but he noticed something odd and had to check it out. Naruto stepped back out of the way of Hanabi's sneaky flying kick from his blind spot and she landed clumsily in front of him, her back exposed to him for easy pickings. Deciding to test what he saw with Hinata, he carefully aimed a punch toward the left shoulder on her back. He was proven right when Hanabi dodged an instant too late as well and got the same nasty graze against her ribs. She cried out before slumping down next to her still recovering sister. He frowned. Sorry about that, ladies. I'll give you some time to recover while I have to talk with your dad. He spoke with the frown still evident on his face. The girls looked curious about what was on the blonde's mind but nodded as they took their time recovering. He walked up next to Hiyashi to pick up his teacup and once again took a sip. Hiyashi remained silent but he seemed to know what his fellow tea drinker was thinking. There is a weakness with your clans by Akugan, Hiyashi Sama. Naruto declared, as if this statement was the indisputable truth, before he set the cup down. Hiyashi raised an eyebrow for show. And, what, pray tell, would that be? You already know. There's a missing chunk of the Byakugan's 360 degree field of vision located on the back near the center just behind the heart. It seems to be the same in both of your daughters so I assume the rest of the clan share the same blind spot. It's not so big that a normal sized fist can slip through the Byakugan's vision field completely but it'll cause one to react just a slight bit slower. If any enemy knew this, they will aim their projectiles at that particular spot. Aren't you worried about anyone finding out? If I could notice it. You saw it because you are very observant and not many outsiders get the chance to spar with a Hayuga on a regular basis, let alone several of us. As for our enemies, none of them survived long enough to figure it out apparently because we have gone this long without that weakness becoming widespread knowledge. Now, I trust you will keep this to yourself, Naruto-san. He or she spoke the last sentence with a small edge in his voice. You have nothing to worry about. This goes to the grave with me, Hiyashi Sama. Naruto replied just as seriously. At this point, the girls joined the men and were shocked to see that Naruto had easily figured out the clan's secret weakness. Their respect for him went up even more. Good. As for you, my daughters, both of you combined barely managed a slight graze on Naruto-san. I have to admit I am a little disappointed in that, despite his growing talents. You will need to work hard to keep up with him and Neji-san. He or she spoke calmly as he sipped from his cup while the girls replied with a dejected, yes, father. While he loved his daughters, he needed to be stern with them on their training. It was to motivate them to train harder in order for them to be able to protect themselves to the best of their abilities in the future. Actually, I noticed something about Hinata-chan that I think you should consider. Naruto pointed out while the girls took their seats next to him. Hinata turned her head toward the blonde in confusion. To be honest, Hanabi-chan is taking to the kata of traditional gentle fist faster and easier than Hinata-chan is. 
At this rate, Hanabi Chan will easily overtake Hanada Chan in just two or three years. Hanada cringed at Naruto's blunt observations. She had a feeling about that but for that to be brought out into the open with her father made her nervous. She also felt a little hurt that Naruto believed that about her. Hanabi became downcast because she knew if this kept up she could be made the clan's heiress and her beloved Nei Chan might get branded. I have seen all of this for a while now. I was going to have a discussion about that. He or she replied calmly but one could detect a small hint of sadness in his tone about his eldest daughter's situation. Hanada looked down. Anyo, I am sorry, father. It seems the elders are right and I may not be qualified to take over your position in the future after Ali. She squeaked when Naruto bopped her on the top of her head very softly. Although it didn't hurt at all, she still moved her hands up to cover her head with an adorable whine and an heart-trenching pout that made him feel quite guilty, but he preservered. Who said this doesn't make you qualified? We just have to figure out a specific workaround for you. The main difference between you and Hanabi-chan is that your body is much more flexible and limber compared to her more rigid body structure, which is what the traditional kata of the gentle fist are made for. Your body is having some slight trouble staying rigid enough when it's so naturally flexible. This leads to problems with your more precise kata. He or she nodded his head at the boy's assessment. Naruto-san is correct. Now that he has brought it up, I have been thinking about a way for you to be able to realize your full potential instead of being restricted by these traditions. This will cause controversy with the elders but I will handle it. I truly believe you should branch out and create your own style of gentle fist that fits your more flexible body. I dare say if we can bring out your full potential with this, you may be able to match up with Neji-san in the future. The girls were stunned that their father would dare defy the clan's rigid traditions for them. Hanada was almost brought to happy tears to hear her father's belief that she could be as strong as her cousin in the future. Naruto smiled brightly, impressed that he or she already came up with some answers, before he noticed a worried look on Hanabi's face. What's wrong, Hanabi-chan? He inquired, directing everyone's attention to the young Hyuga. She shifted uncomfortably. It still does not change the fact that one of us will still have to be branded eventually, Oni-chan. Naruto frowned while Hanada wrapped an arm around her little sister to try to comfort her worries. That's true. No offense, Hiyashi-sama, but your clan's tradition of using the caged bird seal is bullshit. The girls flinched at the blonde's bluntness with their father. Hiyashi merely raised an eyebrow but did not say anything. I have been reading up on seals a little as a side hobby in my trips to the library and I can already tell any decent seal master will create a seal to protect your clan's Byakugan even better without pain of servitude, and the seal can be applied on every single one of your kin, even replacing the caged bird seal already on them. He or she allowed a small smirk at this boy's growing knowledge with seals. It reminded him of his old friend Minato. I understand your view on this. I have never liked using the seal. The only time I ever did use that in recent memory was when I had to pry Neji-san off your broken and bruised body two years ago. He or she smirked inwardly at the blondes grumbling over the memory of that. This seal ruined a great clan prodigy's chance at being recognized as such simply because I was born a few minutes before my brother. I believe it is time we change the way the clan works. The traditionalists would revolt at the mere mention of devising a new seal however, and I have to be careful about looking like I am upholding the traditions as the head of this clan until that day comes. He or she paused to take a sip of his tea. I plan on putting off the decision to choose between you two for the official position of heiress until when Hinata turns 16, which is the latest the clan laws will allow. At the very least the both of you will be able to avoid being branded for quite some time. It is my hope that someone will come up with a new seal before then and we may force the changes within this clan, ones that should have occurred long ago. He or she spoke as if he knew who that someone would be and even inclined slightly toward Naruto. The blonde picked up on this and suddenly felt a small weight growing on his shoulders. Why yeah, let's make the most of the time we have till then. He said with a nervous gulp. The girls didn't pick up on the blonde's slight distress since they were busy being relieved that they still have years before they would have to worry about being branded. For now, I think you should try again against Naruto-san. However, I wish to put a stake on this. If you manage to land a solid hit on him, he will stay for dinner and the night. If you do not, then, aside from seeing him at the academy, he won't be visiting here for a month. He or she suggested calmly, although he was fighting down a dastardly smirk. 
The effects were immediate as the two girls perked up, their eyes glimmering with glee as they could get a chance to sleep with their favorite, teddy bear. Hanabi was even more determined because she did not want her Oni-chan to disappear for a month since she didn't have academy classes with him like her sister. Naruto cringed. Not the Jukin trap of horror. The two excited girls quickly got up to prepare to spar only to be surprised upon seeing their target was already gone from his sitting position. They glanced around to find him running away at a speed that would impress a Junin. They ran off after him just as quickly not letting this chance slip by, leaving behind a deviously smiling Hiyashi. Needless to say, Naruto had to stay the night while being clutched tightly by the Hyuga sisters when they easily found him cowering in the crawlspace under one of the branch houses. It was determined that, in his terrified state, he had forgotten that the Hyugas could see through objects. Some time later at a certain dango shop in Konoha Mitarashi Anko was sitting at her favorite patio table outside her favorite dango shop feeling worn down as she was absentmindedly picking her teeth with a used dango stick. She was feeling so lethargic that, to the shop owner's shock, she didn't order as much dango as she usually did. After two and a half years of being chunin, she felt like nothing had changed for the better for her. Her fellow shinobi still treated her poorly, and the villagers still glared and spat at her with hatred. To make it worse, her 17-year-old body filled out so well that she was already considered one of the most beautiful women in the village, and men were still going after her aggressively in an effort to be the first one to lay with her. Contrary to the wild rumors about her, she still was a virgin. Despite her growing habit of using her amazing body to distract men for her humor or to gain advantages in battles, she still refused to let one single man lay a hand on her intimately. Any man that tried ended up nearly beaten to death. That was another thing she hated about being associated with Orochimaru. Some men believed she deserved to be treated like a whore just because she was his former pupil and they grew angrier the longer she refused any advance. She was worried that eventually one day some men would snap and try everything they could. After all, how could they pass up a chance to make a beautiful woman like her into a whore that didn't charge any money? Anko shuddered at the thought. Despite using her assets to tease men, mostly for spiting them in the end, she found herself rather shy and scared about the idea of sex. She had to fight back embarrassed blushes at mere mentions of dirty words like dick and pussy, among others. Even now she still ran out of the apartment she shared with Yugao, like just recently today, whenever she realized her sister figure was going to have her boyfriend over for some intimate fun. She didn't want to stick around to accidentally overhear something through the walls. Although, she was getting better and getting used to that. Anko looked forward to ending her tour of duty with the patrols soon and get right into her next assignment with Morino Ibiki in the torture and intelligence department. Now that she was going to be able to work in one place for a long period of time, she might be able to form better relationships with her co-workers when they got past their initial prejudices and realized she wasn't what the rumors made her out to be. It would be a long process but she believed that was what she needed to move on beyond her relationships with Yugao and Kurenai in order to possibly make more friends. She was broken out of her thoughts when she saw a flash of golden blonde hair pass by on the street bordering the patio. She smirked, she hadn't seen that brat in a while and maybe some quick company might get her out of her lethargic mood for a little while. Oi, Yaki, said Gaki flinched as he stopped in his track and slowly looked behind him to see who would call out for him. Anko had to hold back a blush upon seeing these beautiful deep blue eyes and rugged whiskers. He certainly grew some in the time since they last saw each other. Shaking it off, she waved her hand, beckoning for one Uzumaki Naruto to come sit with her. Seeing a beautiful purple-haired older girl waving him over, the blonde looked confused for a minute as he turned around and walked closer before realization hit him. Oh, you're the Oni-san that saved me from that guy two years ago. Wow. Has it been that long ago? You certainly have grown quite a bit since then. Please have a seat if you got some time. Naruto grinned as he took the seat across from her at the small patio table. Anko had to wonder just what this brat was eating and doing to be able to get such a fine-tuned body like the one he had now. He was wearing a black tank top with loose burnt orange shorts, and the outfit showed off incredibly toned muscles everywhere. He was clearly training to be a shinobi and she could tell he already developed well ahead of his peers. Anko fought back another blush at the thought of him in the future after he matured some more. 
you're certainly not that weakling I had to save last time we met, Gaki. It's obvious you're training to be a shinobi in the future. Yup. Now I have a thousand different ways of kicking that man's ass all over the street now, so no need for your help anymore. They're not going to be able to do anything to me now. Naruto exclaimed as he puffed his chest out in pride. Anko smirked. Who's your sensei? It's clear you're ahead of everyone your age by a long shot. She quizzed as she signaled the owner for another order of Dango. Um, sorry, but that's classified. You're a Chunin, right? He confirmed indicating the Chunin flak vest she was wearing over her tight white t-shirt and black miniskirt. Gigi I mean the Hokage was strict about that. Anko frowned. She had to admit she wondered just what was so special about this kid. Her roommate, Yugao, mentioned this blonde occasionally and she was secretive with some of the details about him. While Anko was deep in thought, Naruto quietly observed the environment around the two. He was not surprised to see the usual glares, but what surprised him was that the glares didn't seem to be aimed at him exclusively. It did not take him long to realize some of the glares and whispers were directed at the woman sitting across from him. He had a feeling she did not have a reason to deserve the looks, same as him. She felt somehow similar to him in some ways. Is there anything you can sense off this Oni-san, Kurama? Like if she's a host like me. I would be able to sense that even from here inside you, but I do not feel a familiar signature. She's not a host. However, there is a somewhat odd signature coming off her, as if there was something else piggybacking on her chakra. Beyond that, I cannot tell. Thanks. You're still a big help. Is something wrong, Oni-san? Naruto suddenly asked as he looked at his table companion quizzically. Anko was jolted out of her thoughts. Anko. Hem. Midarashi Anko. That's my name. I don't like the Oni-san thing. Oh. My name's Uzumaki Naruto. Nice to meet you, Anko-san. Naruto slightly bowed from his seat. Anko smiled mischievously. Sorry, but I'm still calling you Gaki. You look like one, and I know about your reputation as the village's prankster. She had to chuckle at Naruto's pouting. Would you rather be called Naruto-chan? Or Naru-chan? You still look that much younger than me. She teased with a half-cocked smile as he shot her an annoyed glare. Gaki is fine. He grumbled. A moment later, the shop owner brought over a tray of dango and set it down in front of Anko, who was eyeing them hungrily. The owner looked over at Naruto, who flinched and expected to be glared at, but was surprised when the man bowed. Welcome to my shop. I have to thank you since you've improved my favorite customer's mood. I was getting worried she was not feeling well. Naruto did his sheepish gesture while Anko shot the owner a slightly annoyed look for prying. Hey you thanks. Would you like to try something from this shop? I'm sorry, owner San. I just ate so I'm full. Thank you for the offer, though. Naruto politely inclined his head. The owner smiled and inclined as well before returning inside the shop. You ever had any dango before, Gaki? It's the food of the gods. Anko declared as she munched on her first stick. Naruto immediately showed an affronted expression. Oi, that is not the food of the gods. Ramen is. Oh, Kami. Not this bullshit again. Hush, Fox. This is an important matter. How dare you, Gaki? Ramen doesn't hold a candle to these magnificent spheres of deliciousness. That's because you haven't tried the ramen from the Ichiraku stand, apparently. They make the best ramen in the entire nations. Fine. I don't normally give anyone even a single piece of my dango, but I will allow you to have a bite of this just so you'll understand just how much better than ramen this is. Anko challenged as she held out a stick with one dango remaining on it. HMPH. If I don't like this, then you have to promise to come with me straight to my favorite ramen stand and try a bowl there. Naruto shot back as he grabbed the stick. Anko frowned before she gave a reluctant nod as he slowly put the dango into his mouth. Anko watched on intensely as he closed down on it. Hot, the blonde yelled as he reflexively removed the dango but the stick slipped out of his grip. Both gasped as they watched the dango stick flip end over end in slow motion through the air to land some distance away on the street. They watched in stunned silence as a bird flew in and picked at it to try to lift it. Not being able to, they swore they saw a tick mark form on the bird's head as it turned around to empty its bowels over the dango in retaliation. The two gaped as the bird flew off before seeing a pedestrian step on the dango and it stuck to the sole of one of his shiny looking shoes. Oh damn it. 
these shoes were new, the man cursed as he reached down to remove the dango and tossed it high into the air. Naruto and Anko's heads followed the dango as it went up in an arc toward the shop's rooftop. It landed and rolled down to the gutter right into a drain pipe leading down. The two listened to some slight rattling as the dango bounced down the pipe before popping out into an alleyway next to the shop. It rolled up to an overflowing garbage can and tapped against it. The very slight impact was enough to cause some of the disgusting garbage slop to ooze over the lip of the can and land on the dango in a small pile. On that cue, a huge mass of chittering rats appeared from every shadow and nook to converge on the pile. After a few seconds of noisy and disgusting eating, everything was gone along with all the rats. Anko and Naruto sat in stunned silence. After a tense moment between the two, Anko crakingly turned her head to face Naruto with a blank expression that caused him to sweat comically under her expressionless gaze. To his creeping horror, her aura slowly changed into one of extreme rage that promised a painful death. Should I, run? Yes, you idiot. Run like a bitch. Naruto immediately launched himself out of his seat using the armrests and flipped backward over the back of his chair. Two throne kunai embedded themselves deeply into the backrest. Naruto whimpered as he noted the two kunai would have struck his heart and spleen if he'd sat there an instant longer. It's just food. No need to go psycho on me over that, he shouted as he turned around and zigzagged acrobatically up to the roof of the dango shop leaving distressed outdoor patrons, overturned patio tables and chairs, and several tossed weapons in his wake. You dared to desecrate and waste a precious dango in front of me. That's the death penalty for you. Just be happy I'll make it quick, you damn gaki. Anko shrieked angrily as she hopped over the table to follow Naruto up to the rooftops, her kanai and shuriken flying in the direction of the retreating blonde. It took an hour, but Naruto was able to finally hide from the crazy lady long enough to lose her. As Anko grumbled and stomped off upon not finding the brat, she had to admit meeting him improved her mood considerably. She then began humming and almost skipped happily in spite of glaring villagers as she headed home, her depression pushed back for a while longer. Day before Naruto leaves for another training trip Hokage's office, you called for me, Hokage Gigi. Naruto called out from the office door as he slowly opened it. Hiruzen perked up from his damnable paperwork and beckoned for him to come in. Yes, Naruto-kun. I was hoping to have you meet an ex-student of mine before you leave tomorrow. He should be here any moment. The third thought he saw something flash in Naruto's eyes for an instant. Oh really? He wouldn't happen to be Jiraiya-sama of the Sanin, would he? Oh, you got it right on the first try, Naruto-kun. Not many people usually remember that I was the sensei to the Sanin before they became famous. This time, Hiruzen knew he saw something on Naruto's face, as the boy seemed to smirk evilly for only a split second before schooling his face in a neutral expression. He wondered just what this boy was thinking. He didn't have to think about it long before he saw a whirlwind of leaves appear in the center of the office. A tall middle-aged man with long and wild white hair in a ponytail, a green robe and pants with mesh armor underneath, a red howry over the robe, gray gauntlets on his forearms, and a giant scroll on his back appeared out of the whirlwind. His face, marked with some kabuki-style paint, flashed a brilliant smile as he goofily twirled his ponytail around. His heavy wooden geta clacking loudly on the floor, he began doing a weird dance with kabuki poses and announced in a loud voice. Men fear me and women swoon over my manliness. Hailing from Mount Mayuboku, I am the legendary womanizer, the great hermit toad sage, the ever-gallant Jir Urk. Jiraiya's announcement ended with a strained cry of pain as the tall man's eyes bulged out before he slowly reached down with both hands toward his precious package. It took a moment for anyone to notice that Naruto had moved behind the white-haired man while he was dancing and somehow procured a long stick out of nowhere. It was apparent he took a powerful golf swing with it into Jiraiya's prized jewels. The third was too stunned to say anything. Awesome. This stick not only works on a Kumo Nin, but on one of the Sanin too. The blonde exclaimed gleefully as if he hadn't just hit one of the most powerful shinobi in the elemental nations in the Nads. Jiraiya groaned in extreme agony before collapsing into a twitching heap, both his hands covering his jewels. The third was about to angrily demand that Naruto explain the reason for this when he was stunned by a growing look of cold fury on the blonde's face as the boy walked around into Jiraiya's view. The white-haired man looked up him through bleary eyes, still in pain. Hello, Godfather. 
Naruto greeted in a dead and quiet tone. Hearing, Godfather, in that tone made both Jiraiya and Hiruzen flinch violently. This is to thank you for leaving me alone for all these years, not even bothering to check up on me. The boy finished. He glanced over at the stunned Hokage. Sorry, Hokage Gigi. I'm pretty pissed so I'll be going somewhere to cool off. I'll be back later. Before the old man could stop the blonde, he was surprised to see the boy do the hand seals for Shunshin and disappear in a swirl of black and orange leaves. That would have impressed him if he didn't have to worry about the situation at hand. Sensei, H. He, knows. How? The Toad Sage's voice still remained strained as he slowly rose himself off the floor, one of his hands still gingerly protecting his balls. His sensei waved his hand dismissively in the air and they felt the shocked hidden Anbu guards leave the room at once for privacy between the two. I didn't tell him. The only explanation is that the Kayubi must have told him, and he kept this hidden. Jiraiya narrowed his eyes at the mention of the demon fox. Then that means he must know everything else too. Omake one evening at the Hayugas, that damn bastard, putting me up like a prize to be won. Naruto grumbled quietly as he sat on the couch, trapped. The Hayuga sisters had seized onto his body as they slept quite peacefully at the moment. Hanada was sleeping in her favorite position, in which her head was on Naruto's lap with her arms tightly wrapped around his right thigh. Hanabi cuddled up tightly against his left arm. Naruto sighed at his predicament and resigned himself to his fate for the night. He looked at the girl's cute sleeping faces and smiled slightly. Guess it's not that bad. I'm getting a little sleepy myself anyway. Before the boy could doze off, though, his ears perked as he heard footsteps nearing. From the light steps, he figured it was one of the servants. Oh, how cute, an unusually cheerful female Hayuga exclaimed quietly as she entered the room. Hello, Tomo-san. Sorry I'm still here so late. As you can see, I'm stuck. Naruto greeted as he looked over his shoulder at a long-haired and beautiful Hayuga woman. Despite being in her 30s, she did not act or look her age as she seemed to be more like an energetic 20-something woman in the prime of her life. It is all right, Naruto-sama. I do not mind. You know, you are a very popular topic with all the women in this clan. Really. Hanada-chan keeps telling me that, but I didn't believe her. Well you should. Lady Hanada and Lady Hanabi are so lucky they get to be comfortable like that with you on a regular basis. Hmm, maybe I should join in. Naruto twirled his head back at the servant quickly, almost snapping it off in the process. Why why you don't have to do that? He whispered nervously, trying to move but froze as he realized the Hyuga sisters were preparing to strike at him with their jukin if he moved any more. Oh, but I want to, Tomo trailed off as she stepped up behind the couch where he was sitting. He swore he heard some panting. You would not mind a very pretty woman like me cuddling up to you for a moment, would you? The servant teased almost seductively as she bent down and slowly wrapped her arms around the comically sweating and reddening blonde's neck from behind. She rubbed her slightly pink cheek against his very bright red one as she sighed contentedly. I don't care if I get in trouble for this. This is worth it, because you're so warm and cuddly. She murmured as she seemed about to drift off to sleep despite still standing bent over behind him. Naruto groaned inwardly. Can this get any crazier? His answer came when Hinata began to stir, and was unknowingly moving one of her hands precariously close to where it should not go. Damn. Not that again. Thanks for listening. I hope you guys liked it and support the author while you're at it. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like for more what ifs. See you guys in the next video. Peace.